And um, so I, I forgot that it was going to be on his name, under his name. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> don't oh no, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Okay. Tomorrow, yeah. You know, I'm gonna ask y'all to throw out some questions. We're gonna discuss. If y'all wanna throw something in, just throw it in. Everybody will be muted. As I told Jackie Gwen, we'll have me. Sometimes we have fifty, sometimes we have two hundred on the live zoom. They're comprised of professionals, uh, high school students, college students from usually we have USC, Ohio State, some from Florida, some from Virginia. So there are universities all across the country that will send their athletes on. But um, then we'll have, you know, church groups. <laughs> I will not. I will not. <laughs> no, is this is this one squirrel? Squirrel. He comes to my salon every day, and when I first moved in, his I, girl, this squirrel, he act like he pay rent there. <laughs> Georgia. 
I just found out that I was the first African American to win an NCAA title. I just found this out um, last week. So that meant a lot to me coming from seeing the sport and how it, how it has evolved. And I am a part of that. So um, for me, I still sometimes can't believe I went to the University of Georgia. I still can't believe NCAA. I still can't believe Olympics. I can't believe World Championships. It's just so many things that happened to me that I never dreamed about. It wasn't a dream of mine because, like I, like you said, I wanted to be a hairstylist. And um, my coach had to literally push me to go to college. And um, it was really hard. But once, things, once the ball got rolling for me, I was ready. Each step was just a progression for me. Each win was a progression for me. It, was, it made me thirsty. It made me wonder if I train harder, will I be able to do this? If I train a little bit harder, maybe I'll be able to do that. And making my first Olympic team and just making it to the finals, that was a booster for me. I'm like, oh, next door round. Yes. In your first Olympic team, you made the finals. Yes. In the whole process, you made the finals. You made the finals in the Olympics. Yes. You made the finals. Yes. So now she just don't throw in this jacket. It was in two events. Yes. <laughs> let it be known. Let that be known. Let it be known. <laughs> 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 and, and just 
and then just the people that I ran against, two world record holders, um, the East Germans at the time, the Jamaicans at the time. It just was a time where I was in awe of what I had, what I was seeing in front of me and just to be a part of it and just to watch all the great world record holders, Jackie Joyner, Kersey, Carl Lewis, just everybody. It was, it was like overwhelming for me. And I figured I was young and if I stay healthy, my time would come. I was patient, very patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jackie, Jackie, Jordan, I need y'all to hear this. If there was ever a person that got the record in most points ever scored in a track, it has to be Jackie. Jackie would have to bring her lunch in the track. Mm -hmm. And her dinner. <laughs> and she was the first one at the track and always the last one to meet. Jackie, mm -hmm. you, just like Gwen did, you had to take on all comers in all events. Like, you were a heptathlete, but you could stand alone in almost every event you participated in, and you could have made your own in individual events. Mm -hmm. How was it for you coming through UCLA, and then we talked about Gwen being a three-time Olympian. You were four. That's 16 years of greatness. Mm -hmm. Not including just the collegiate, and then we're gonna throw in a little basketball in there mm -hmm. just so that you'll know how good I really am. <laughs> so Jackie, how was that for you? You know, it was um, it was really on the the collegiate level. Mm -hmm. I guess when I, I left my school and went out to UCLA, yeah, I really I wanted to be one of the best, but I didn't really know what that really meant being mm -hmm. one of the best. And so my freshman year. You know, I play basketball and, and I struggle a little bit because struggle in track and field. I was ready, I did the basketball, but then when I got to track, that's my heart and soul, and I just really wanted to be a great jumper. And I was struggling with the long jump, I could never get on the board, I didn't care about anything else, but then we just kept training and then you know, while we were fine, people would come out there and like try to talk to me and you know, but it didn't matter. You know, mm -hmm. I think for me, 
the failures that I went through, like you said, I, I came out, I was really good in, in college. I was what, number one, number two in the world in high school. And I, I didn't do what they were. I wanted to, I looked up to Gwen so much. Gwen knew I followed her around everywhere. <laughs> High school coach put me on the circuit, and I would be with Gwen every practice. And Gwen would tell me things, and I looked up to her. Then when I got to UCLA, I followed Jackie around, and I looked up to Jackie. And I wanted to be really good. It didn't work out for me in that way, but I found my my calling in coaching, and it's the same concept. You can't give up. Maybe Plan A doesn't work out, but Plan B does. But Coach Bev, you're the one who told me that. And you said, you can't just give up because you didn't make it over here. You've got to try something else and make that work. Just because it didn't work here doesn't mean you can't be great somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy, but I found it helping other people reach what I didn't reach. That makes me feel fulfilled in the way that I didn't fulfill it how I thought I was getting the gold medals, I help other people get gold medals. You know, it's rare. Tampa Bay just won a Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. The hardest, you know, the hardest place to win is at home. Mm -hmm. Your greatest Olympia came in the city you grew up in mm -hmm. and that you love. How was it and, 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 and how did you handle the pressure of going into the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. Well, uh, it had to be for me. Well, for me, because I am, or during the time I was an introvert, so it was really hard for me to do interviews when I was away. So it wasn't as hard as people think it was. It just made me want to. I, I, I trained really hard, and sometimes I look when I look back over it now. I looked that I overtrained because I wasn't, I was trying to do it for the people that I grew up with in the projects because a lot of us didn't make it out of there. And even though they had seen me in the other two Olympics, it's just the fact that I just said God had to put it here for me, whether I win, whether I lose, but just for people that grew up with me to be able to see this little girl. You played marbles with, you played hide and go seek with, you played on the merry-go-round, the baseball, all the people that watched me. And when I was a little girl, just any game we played, I was the fastest. Anything I did, I was the strongest. So it just was, uh, the pressure for me mainly was, I just want people who I grew up with to understand we all can do good. We may not be at the, be at the top of our whatever it is, but we can still make it out to do something positive and to be able to come back and help other people. So that that really was my goal. That was the hardest thing for me. Just wanting people to be proud of me, just to be happy for me, just to know I grew up with that girl. I went to high school with that girl. I went to elementary school with that girl. And that was the best part for me. Win, lose, or draw. I was just happy that people knew I represented where I came from. That just touched my heart in so many different ways. Uh, that's phenomenal. Jackie, man, I watch you take Heidi Drexler. Mm -hmm. And um, um, what's the other long jump? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> 